friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, I am going to try the new trend that's going around. I think it's most well known as the cowhide or, you know, the, yeah, the cowhide technique or the cow cowhide look um, and bleaching technique. So we're going to try that today. If you guys haven't heard about this technique or seen any shirts, you're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned because um, these look awesome once they're done. I am trying this on three different types, sorry, three different colors of shirts today. These are all going to be the Gildan 6400. I get asked this all the time, so I'm going to make sure I go over it first thing in the video. These are Gildan 6400. They're in Heather colors. The Heather colors are the only ones that are 65% polyester, 35% cotton. I want to make sure that I'm very clear that when you go to order any Gildan 6400s, you have to make sure that they're in the Heather colors. So Heather before the name. So for example, this is Heather Navy, Heather Purple, and this one's Heather Sapphire. If they have just a navy or just a sapphire or just a purple, those are gonna be 100% cotton or a higher count of cotton. You don't wanna get those ones, you wanna get the ones in a heather color. Because like I said, they're 65% polyester, 35% cotton, which makes it awesome to bleach and you're not gonna to have to worry about holes because you definitely don't wanna bleach 100% cotton. You are way more prone to getting holes when you do that. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna go outside and bleach, of course, but this is a little bit of a different technique than you've seen me done before. Very similar, but we're just adding on one extra step. I'm gonna quickly go over that because when I go outside, I probably won't talk to you. I'll probably just have my camera rolling as you guys watch me do it. It's easier that way because my backyard can be really noisy with cars driving by. So explaining what I'm doing. Typically, you guys have seen me in the past if you've watched my tutorials. I take my shirts out, I lay them out and I scrunch them up and then I spray with bleach. I then quickly open them up, I turn them on the back, I scrunch the back and then I spray with bleach. And then depending, if I want a centerpiece, I would stick a piece of cardboard inside my shirt and I would spray the centerpiece so that it's bleaching at the same time as the rest of the shirt. So this time is gonna be similar. The difference is I am not going to do a centerpiece on these shirts. I just kind of want to go for a different look and I want the overall to look the same of the entire shirt, not one big bleach spot. With that said, I am actually going to be bleaching the majority of these shirts. Where in the past, I'm trying to think if I have any shirts here in this room. I don't have any in this room. But in the past, you would see that if I were to bleach this shirt, you would see some bleach marks and then a center bleach spot, but the majority of the shirt's brown. With this technique, you want a lot of white. You want a lot of bleached surface to get it, to get that really cool look. So I'm gonna go through and I'm actually gonna bleach a lot more than you're gonna see me do in the past. I'm gonna flip it, I'm gonna do the back, and then I'm gonna let it process in the sun on both sides until I get it to the white that I want it. Then this is where we're gonna switch it up. I am then going to, as soon as I get it to the white that I want it, or really close to the white that I want it, I'm going to re-scrunch it, trying to only include the pieces that are still, in this case, blue, or Heather Navy, right? I would scrunch it up and try and get some of the spots that are still Heather Navy, and I'm gonna spray them with bleach again. However, I am not gonna let that bleach stay on as long as the first stage did, because the first stage, I want white. The second stage, I want that magic in-between color. And on this shirt, that magic in-between color is like a coppery, it's like a beautifully copper brown. So that's where this process is gonna be different. The first stage is gonna be pretty quick and easy, not quick, I would say, just however long it takes your son to bleach your shirt, but it's gonna be easy, right? The second step, especially on these other two shirts, they have a really cool middle color is what I call it, where they're gonna turn a certain color before they go white. And both of these off the top of my head are, are gonna turn kind of like a pinkish color before they hit that white level. So I'm gonna bleach these all to the white that I want them. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna bleach the, the areas in between, still leaving some of the natural color for sure, or the original color for sure. But at the end result is going to be like a white, a navy, and then that in-between copper color a white, a purple, and then an in-between pink color. Same thing with this though, an in-between like pinkish color. Now we'll see how these turn out. I haven't done this before, so you guys are gonna watch me fail or succeed, so be ready to take notes so that you can learn from me. Without further ado, let's get outside and get bleaching. Okay, you guys, I know I said I wasn't gonna talk much outside, but I wanted to make sure that I clarified a few things before I get started. It is loud outside. I've got some neighbors doing um, their yard work. So I'm in my garage right outside my backyard um, and just wanted to quickly clarify some things. When you're bleaching, make sure that you are being safe. Make sure that you're wearing gloves. I see so many people that will sit there and bunch up their shirts with bleach on them with no gloves on. I promise you, I've seen it time and time again, especially in our group and Facebook. Again, if you're interested in joining, it's Emma's Cottage DIY. 
DIY that's on Facebook. Um, but I've seen so many horror stories of people not wearing gloves and the bleach gets up underneath their fingernails and basically eats it away. And it's extremely painful. So please wear gloves when you guys are bleaching. Um, the other thing is I always keep my bleach, as you can see down there, in its container. As you guys know, bleach and hydrogen peroxide come in a solid colored container. So bleach is in this white, it's not clear. It's that way for a reason. The second, or if it sits in sunlight too long, that's when it can actually, I wouldn't say dilute, but it, it, it the, the bleach won't be as strong. So you will see me in my videos, even today's, that I'm gonna pour it into a spray bottle. Um, and it, the spray bottle is clear, but because I'm only using it for a quick time, I, I don't ever, I haven't experienced any problems with my bleach diluting but I make sure that I transfer that bleach back into its container when I'm done because I wanna make sure that I can utilize that bleach forever. Um, the next thing is hydrogen peroxide. Same thing with your hydrogen peroxide. It comes in a brown bottle for a reason. Um, and the hydrogen peroxide, I will usually keep in a water bottle, but the water bottle has to be like, you see me use these spritz bottles that I use and they're all black, they're completely black. No sunlight can get through. Sunlight will definitely ruin your hydrogen peroxide. Um, I get this question asked a lot, Emma, why do you use hydrogen peroxide? I use it outside to help slow down the bleaching process if needed. And I use it inside when I'm pressing shirts that have been bleached. Sometimes when you're pressing a shirt with that hot press, you can actually get some scorch marks on your shirt, which is like a discoloration, like a brown yellowish color. Um, and all you have to do is just spray a little bit of a spritz of hydrogen peroxide on that, either bring it back out in the sun to evaporate and dry, or I just grab my heat press and I press, I place it about an inch, two inches above the image from the shirt and help to evaporate the hydrogen peroxide. And it has worked for me every time to remove the scorch marks. I think that's pretty much it besides, you know, if you're outside, you typically don't need a mask. I'm going to be honest and I don't wear a mask when I'm outside unless it is windy. If it is windy, I wear a mask because that bleach can come back up and go down your lungs. And I have had that happen before and I was really sick for like a week. So, um, or if you're bleaching inside of a space like this, like a garage, then make sure that you're wearing a mask because you do not have airflow and you definitely need airflow when you're using bleach. Um, and then sunblock. I definitely went upstairs real quick, put some sunblock on my face, on my part, because I always forget my part, and on my arms and my legs, because I don't want to get burnt while I'm outside bleaching. So those are just some of the things you forget because you're so excited to go outside and play and bleach. Don't forget to take care of yourself and make sure that you follow extra precautions to protect yourself. So without further ado, let's get set up and get start bleaching. Um, looking back at the timer, I can see how long I was recording. That took me about seven minutes. Um, every region, every situation is going to be different, but it's really hot today. I want to say it's in the 80s. I have no clouds in the sky. I have, you know, awesome sunlight. Just kind of want to show you what can happen in eight minutes. Let me show you the shirts. You can see how white they're already turning. Definitely some turning quicker than the others. And I know I said inside that this one turns pink. It wasn't pink, it's green, I forgot. So the purple has like an undertone of pink. The navy, the heather navy is gonna have an undertone of like that really pretty copper color. And then that um, sapphire blue has an undertone of like a really cool neon green looking thing. Whew, I'm out of breath because it's really hot. Anyways, so um, I did do something a little different than I was anticipating. I want these to be way more white than their original color. So you saw me do scrunch up technique two times on each side. So two times on the front, flipped it two times on the back. As you guys could tell, I wasn't taking myself serious. I wasn't trying to be methodical or perfect. I was just bleaching. And who cares with this method if it bleaches through to the back because you're bleaching the shirt. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, most videos that I have seen, they're using um, like a bottle that they squirt the bleach down on 
totally can to each is their own but i love my spritzer bottles they're my favorite and i've always used them and it's just where my comfort is you only have to spray like one spritz and it will spray a long time and it's just it makes it so that i don't have to waste so much bleach and you you guys can see like they're bleaching great i don't have to worry about using something like that um the next thing i wanted to point out because you guys might ask why did i lay them on the grass and why didn't i keep them on the table i do that primarily in the summer because bleach is going to evaporate pretty quick and i want it to evaporate off that table so that i can go and reuse that table and not have to worry about have remaining bleach on it now in the winter time um, and in cooler weather the bleach does not evaporate as fast so you have to actually wipe down your table so that you don't get that residual bleach but in the summertime it literally evaporates so quick i can reuse that table over and over and over again and i don't have to worry about the bleach from the prior shirt getting onto the other one i don't know how it just does that's my experience you guys may uh, experience something different but that's my experience um so as you can see here i'm going to lay these out until i get them the white that i want and then i'm going to flip and sometimes i'll actually come out and just keep flipping like every two to three minutes so that they're processing equally on each side and then i'll put the camera back and you guys can watch me bleach the final time and that final time you guys saw how fast i mean this has now been maybe 10 minutes that these have been out and they're almost white so on my final time i probably will bleach them and pull them off like within two to three minutes because I want them to stay that really cool color. Um, and the longer I keep them out in the sun like this, they're gonna go white and I don't want the color white. I want it to stay that mid tone. So I'm gonna go and flip them real quick. Okay, I just thought of something else that's a good tip. Start with the colors that you know take longer to process. I know this Heather Navy takes longer to get uh, fully white then like the heather sapphire is so fast um so i'm gonna go heather maybe then i'm gonna do heather purple then i'm gonna do heather sapphire left last and then that way they should all end up uh, getting processed to the stage that i want them at at about the same time okay the other thing i wanted to mention is i know that i said i was going to come out here and scrunch this up again but i'm actually not going to don't worry i know i'm touching my face but this is like totally dry it is completely dried in the sun still bleaching but it's dry um and this was what 12 minutes um instead i want the majority of this navy shirt to be white and that pretty copper color with maybe only a few spots of the navy so i'm actually going to leave this one flat and just kind of spray it where are the other ones i think i may actually scrunch those ones up because i do want some of the original color okay here we go Can you see that pink? It's kind of see-through right now. You can kind of see the pink, the purple, and the white. That's what I'm going for. And I'm gonna call this one good. I'm gonna hurry and go wash it. And this one, this one, I don't think the green stage is gonna work. So I'm gonna wash all three of them. They are all three done that fast, like literally seconds. So keep that in mind that the second stage goes way fast. Okay, you guys, I just washed them out in my kitchen sink. Those of you that follow me know that I typically wash them out upstairs in my, my laundry room sink, but I didn't this time because I, ow, I just shocked myself. <laughs> uh, I didn't this time because I was rushing to the sink because I was really panicked that they um, were processing too fast. So um, I washed them with Dawn dish soap, that's what I always do, and rinse them out really, really good. And then I throw them in the wash all together, just in a cold cycle. Because these are gonna be my shirts, I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse them with my regular laundry detergent. And then as soon as they dry, I'll let you see how they turn out. They look pretty awesome though. Hi guys, day two of the reveal on how the shirts turned out. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool method. Um, I wouldn't say it worked exactly how I thought it would, but I don't think that that means that it can't work. I think that it means my conditions yesterday were absolutely perfect for bleaching. My shirts bleached so fast, so fast in fact, that I couldn't wash them quick enough. Um, and just to give you an idea, if you have that same situation, and your shirts are processing too quick, it's a really good idea to have a peroxide bath outside, which is basically water and peroxide, and you can throw your shirts inside there, hurry and mish it up, um, and that's gonna help stop the bleaching process at the stage that you want it at. Um, the second, as you guys saw from the video, 
I was spraying and it was turning white within seconds. Like it is never like that, you guys. Like it usually takes me a good 30 to 45 minutes to bleach shirts. These were done within like 12 to 15 minutes. It, it just went too fast. It was just too warm, too much. So I think um, I'm gonna try it again because there's a few things I wanna switch it up. But I think for the second step, when you're going and spraying it again, I would suggest <laughs> being a have a hydrogen peroxide bath ready so that you can hurry and throw it in and stop it right away or maybe go into a shaded area um i, I don't know like i i haven't perfected that yet but i'm gonna try and, uh, and hopefully i'll be able to give you some better feedback but let me at least show you how these turned out so this really pretty i think this was the heather sapphire this is how it turned out i actually let me come up closer so you guys can see i actually love the way this turned out i think it's so pretty it's going to be hard to see it i think from the camera it's not picking up that really cool green color that's in between i just like i'm looking at my screen and i don't see the green on the screen but i see the green um so it has a really cool green in between which i thought was kind of cool um but i would have loved it if the green would have popped a little more and so if i try this color again i'm going to definitely make sure that i'm a lot quicker at bringing that in the purple turned out amazing. Again, this is the Gildan Heather purple. It's got that really cool pink color in between. You can see that a little bit better on the camera than you can the blue shirt. But I just thought this one turned out so cool. Um, I really, really like the design and I, I haven't decided what design I wanna put on front or if I'll just leave them blank, but I just thought these turned out so cool looking, right? Um, and then here's the one that's the actual cow hide that everyone's been trying. And I'm not a super duper fan on this one. It's not exactly what I wanted it to be. I feel like I definitely wanted more white. I don't have enough white spots, I don't think. Um, and then I feel like I have way too much of the um, navy still, the heather navy in there. I wanted this to be more of like that copper brown color that you're seeing throughout. So I am going to be trying this again. Um, and I'm, I'll, I won't talk in between. I'll just put the video out there. I'm gonna try it again. And then I'll show you the reveal afterwards just so that we can make it quick. Um, and if you don't want to watch that whole process, then just speed up until the end and I'll show you the final reveal. Um, and I don't hate this by any means. Like I think for a first attempt, it turned out pretty cool. Like to have different colors just with bleach and not having to dye your shirt with, you know, spray dyes. I think this turned out pretty darn good. That's not a bad idea. I could actually get like a brown or copper spray dye color and add some more color back into this if I wanted to. Thoughts? Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and try again. But like we did last time, I'm definitely gonna do more bleach the first time around. Um, you, you guys saw me scrunch up my shirt. I don't think I'm gonna scrunch it up as much. I'm gonna leave um, more of the surface there so that I can get the majority of it bleached white. Then I am gonna be super prepared and ready as soon as it gets to the white that I want it because I know how fast it's gonna go and today's temperature is about the same as yesterday. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spray like I did, like the technique, I'm gonna do exactly the same because that worked to, to spread the bleach. Um, but I am going to be ready to go to hurry and wash these off or have a hydrogen peroxide bath out there that I can hurry and dip it in so that it stops because this copper color started disappearing. Like it's there. Let me bring this back up. You can see like this section right there. You can see that copper color. If I could have caught it sooner, this would have been way more bright and vibrant copper. Instead, it started turning the bleach white. So that's what I mean by the second section when you're trying to do that second stage of bleaching. You got to be quick. Again, totally depends on the weather, your sun, the environment that you're working in. Um, but the situation that I'm in yesterday and again today with the weather, I'm gonna have to be quick on that second route. I have to hurry and wash it off almost within seconds or minutes after I spray that second spray of bleach. Um, so I'm gonna do the same color because I wanna I want to perfect the cowhide look and the cowhide look to me looks best on this Heather Navy. Um, but I'm also gonna try a sweatshirt. Should I? Yes, I should, absolutely. I know you guys are gonna ask, so I'm gonna tell you right now, this is also a Gildan. However, this Gildan is a 50-50, so this is gonna be 50% polyester, 50% cotton. I have not been able to find a sweatshirt that has the same um, material as these shirts, which again, these shirts are 65% polyester, 50% cotton. Um, and the reason why we like the higher polyester, just in case you're new to sublimation, is because your images are gonna be way more vibrant when you have a polyester count of 65% or higher. You're still gonna be able to sublimate on 50%. I do it all the time. Um, but this one, I you can get it. I wanna say I got these in bulk. I have a whole bunch that I bought last year. Um, and still have them. And I bought these ones from SNS Activewear, I think is what it's called. Uh, you get really good prices with them if you can prove that you have like an LLC in a business. 
However, I have found that the shipping at SNS is a lot more expensive than the shipping at Jiffy Shirts and Clothing Shop Online. I don't know if anybody else has seen that. So truly you may see better prices on SNS, but are they really better prices? Because the shipping's a lot more. So I think they balance each other out. So anyways, I will make sure I have the link to this um, in the comments or in this description below, but I can tell you right now, looking at it, sorry, it's on my computer. It is this, it's a soft style crew neck sweater. It's a Gildan S is in Sam, F is in Frank, zero, zero, zero. And this is in the Heather, I think it's the dark Heather. Let me double check, double check, double check. Yeah, the dark Heather is the only one of this brand that's a 50-50. The other ones are gonna be a way higher count of cotton. I think most of the other ones are either 75% cotton or 80% cotton. And I wouldn't dare bleach with that much cotton because you're gonna, you're gonna risk it getting holes. So, okay, let's go try again and see if I can get these two to turn out a little bit better. I just made a breakthrough <laughs> so I've seen some videos where people will actually use a, like a little bottle and they squirt out the bleach that is the trick we just figured it out okay you can see here these are the first shirts we did they're still bleaching and this is the scrunch up method with me spraying with this spritz bottle okay this is how I always bleach however with this cowhide method ta-da look at that way better um all i did was scrunch up this shirt really tight and i squeezed this is all i had at my house this is what i use for decorating cookies and stuff um i'm sure you can buy some cheaper ones or whatever but i just put some bleach in this bottle and squirted it out onto the shirt um and hopefully you guys saw from the last clip but i just sat there and kind of scrunched it in together um, but because I really like the design on this one, I don't want it bleeding through. So I stuck in a piece of cardboard so that that will help prevent it from bleeding through to the back and the front. But that definitely looks like a cowhide compared to this, like night and day, you guys. So the scrunch up technique with this is way better. One thing I think to point out when you're using one of these spritz um, spray bottles, you're gonna have, a, like right here, you can see how it's oversprayed. It's always gonna have an overspray. And I think that's why this shirt doesn't give such a crisp line um, like you're seeing on that one. So really excited to see how this turns out. These are all still bleaching, trying to get them to white. It is slower than yesterday, so that's good. It can help me kind of really monitor these close. Um, I flipped these two already, and this one is so far just on the front. I still need to flip that one. Hey guys, I just had another idea. I don't know if you can tell. Actually, let me just show you. Some parts of this shirt, like right there, see how it's kind of that copper color that I love? Um, when I first came out, this table was sitting out all night. I didn't put it away. So the sprinklers had gotten a little bit wet. So these pieces were wet when I started. So what I'm gonna try and do to salvage this shirt, cause I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna like it after I just figured out that hack that you tried. Um, I just got a regular water bottle. This is just water. I'm gonna spray it, get it wet, and then put the bleach on it 
to see if that will help slow down the process enough that I can secure that copper color that I'm going for. Let's try it. With this method, you are using so much more bleach than normal. And I would maybe dilute my bleach, which I typically don't dilute, but maybe in this situation I would because I had to put on a mask because it is so, so strong. Um, and I could definitely tell that it was unhealthy. So I'm wearing a mask now. I'm gonna stop it right there. Literally, I'm not even gonna let it sit in the sun because that's the copper color that I want. So I'm gonna take it inside and get it washed. All right, friends. I just pulled them out of the dryer and I'm so excited with the way it turned out. I'm gonna leave the rest for last. Okay, so quick, fresh refresher on take two, okay? So this is the typical, let me get these out of the way. This is the typical way I bleach. I was telling you guys, I want more copper. Definitely got more copper, right? But it's still not as white. Like I don't have enough white that I wanted. This is the one I did yesterday. Way more of that original color. Today, way more of the copper color, but still not enough white. But when we did that new method outside where we were using that bottle to pour a lot of bleach on at one time, and just the way, like you scrunch it up instead of just like use your fingers and you're scrunching it up. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Oh, my Lanta. This is exactly what I was going for. Get close for you. Oh, what? Look at that cowhide print. At least that, I think I did a pretty good job. Look at it. Love it. And I cannot wait to put a really cool, like, I wanna do like a cow or something. <gasps> Speaking of which, I got my, my craft source package today and I think that there is some prints in there, um, some transfers in there that I wanna put on this shirt. Before I open that up, let me show you the sweater. I actually, I always say sweater, I mean sweatshirt. Um, I think this one turned out really cool too. I think this one could have been a little bit more white, but I'm not gonna complain. I actually really like how this one turned out. I think that's really awesome and haven't decided what I want to put on it yet, but I think I'm going to give this one to my son and put something cool on it. So, so exciting, right? Okay. 
let's open up this package and see the transfer that's inside that I'm planning on putting on this. I'm so excited that this package came today. Like, are you guys like me? And like, you get so excited on package day. Like, I got a notification this morning from UPS saying that it's coming. And so all day long, I'm like, like a little doggy at the window watching for anybody that drives by hoping it's UPS. In fact, I posted a silly video on TikTok. If you guys aren't following me on TikTok, go check me out. And this cottage DIY. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. So excited about all the fun stuff I have in here. Lots of fun things that are coming up. Give you guys a little bit of sneak peek. We got some amazing glitters. Look at those awesome fun colors. Some more fun glitters. I don't know if you see from there, but these are like some, um, like I think this was like a beach theme or something. Yeah, yeah, beach glitter. Look at these ones. These are like flakes, gold and silver and rose gold flakes. Ah. Okay, all right. Oh my gosh, I got so much stuff, you guys. New things I want to try. Here's some more glitter. This is like, to me, I thought it looked like a Christmas hat. This was called the plaid glitter bundle. And why am I getting all this glitter, you may ask? Let me show you. Uh, let me find it just a second. It's in here. Pulling stuff out. Ta -ta -ta -da 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 -da. I am going to try something new that I've never done before. Um, they hosted a video on my craft source the other day teaching how to do these. But these are like, I think they're called like a snow globe. Yep, they are snow globe. These are the 15 ounce ones. Ta -ta -ta. Let me show you up close. So these come with a hole in the bottom and you'll put like the glitter and stuff inside of them. So they're kind of hollow on the inside. There's, there's like a, a space in between. Hopefully you can tell. I'm gonna put the glitter on the inside. And then I bought the resin and the UV lamp that you put the resin where that hole is that I just showed you and then the lamp and then it cures it so that you don't have any of that glitter leaking out. Never done it, but it looks like so much fun and I'm excited to teach you guys how to do that. Who's excited to learn? Me, because I'm gonna learn as I go. What else did I get? I got some um, two little coasters. To, you can use the resin and make some fun little coasters. So these are the, it's not coasters, these are the, um, it's like the silicone. Why can't I think of what these are called? The, um, Emma, the, um, the word is going away from me. Um, I can't find it. I know it should be on here, but I don't see it. The mold, that's what I'm looking for. It's like a mold that you can use to make really cool coasters. And that's where you can do either glitter or those really cool flakes. I got some more heat resistant cake because I need some. I've got some fun sublimation things I want to try. These are really awesome for the, the cool little, um, ah, I got one right here. Hard seltzers, right? And then this koozie will go right over your hard seltzer. So it fits perfectly. So I got two of them because I thought that I would make one for me and one for my neighbor. <laughs> um, and then a canned one. I want to make one for my husband. A cute little ceramic star that I'm going to try to sublimate on. The alphabet, same thing. This is going to be the molds that I can make and create some fun stuff. Holy, look at all this stuff. I'm so excited. Um, and that's it. I got four of those snow globe, slow glo snow globe cups to create. So super excited. Again, can't wait to show you guys. I'm so sorry that I totally just went way off subject right there, but I was really excited to show you these that just came in. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is even better than it looked online. So, so excited. So these are called the full color transfers that you can get from my craft source. It comes with the directions on how to press them. I even have a few that I haven't pressed that I ordered a few. Well, actually I think I ordered it quite a bit ago. Hopefully, hopefully I can still use them. I haven't looked that up to see if I set the time limit on it. I guess we'll find out together. But, okay, I had this in mind for a few weeks now. So, it encouraged me to buy this. It's probably gonna be backwards to you guys, I'm not sure. But it says, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy dart. And I'm gonna put that on this shirt. How cute is that gonna be? Cannot wait to put that on that shirt. I got a, a few other cute ones, this cute skeleton one with butterflies on it. That would even be cute on that sweater that I did. Or maybe even on one of these ones. Ooh, that would be cute on that one. Um, and then I just thought this one was adorable. <gasps> 
Ooh, this one could be cute on, where did I put it, you guys? Maybe this one would be cute on this one. Let's see. What if this would be cute on the purple? Oh my gosh, I'm ranting, you guys. You can totally fast forward to the end if you want. But what if this would look good on the purple? Sort of sweet, sort of spooky. That could be cute, huh? How cute. Um, a few of the other ones that I still have left over that I haven't used yet that could be even cute on this green one. I've got classy but a little trashy. I think that's so cute. Um, and then boy mama and then straight out of patience. I just thought those were cute. I think I got these ones to be like a front and back of a t-shirt. And I just haven't had the time to press them yet or bleach or I've just been busy. I'm really busy guys. So with all of this said, it's getting late. I have a few things I need to wrap up. Probably should go cook some dinner for my kids. So we're gonna continue this tomorrow um, where we can press either these images um, on these shirts or maybe even some sublimation. So I'll have to dream on it tonight and decide how I wanna move forward. But what do you guys think about this new technique that we tried with um, squirting out the bleach versus spraying it? I hope that you guys are on the same boat as me. If you're not, that's fine. We can all have different opinions, but I think this turned out so, 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 so stinking cool. Okay, until tomorrow. All right, you guys, it is pressing day. I am so excited. This is like, I love bleaching. I love dreaming about the designs, but oh my gosh, when you can actually press your designs and then they become done. Speaking of which, I forgot what I'm wearing. So this is one of the first ones that we went outside and played with and I already pressed these designs. These are the full color transfers that you guys can get from my craft source. Um, make sure that you guys use the code Emma's Cottage so that you can get 5% off your total purchase. Um, but yeah, how cute did this one turn out front and back? Um, if you're interested, I did do a TikTok video on this. You guys can follow me on TikTok, which is Emma's Cottage DIY. Um, okay, so this is already a temperature. We are doing, like I said, full color transfers today. You guys know me, I love myself some sublimation, but I got some really cute transfers from my craft source and I just think that they're gonna pair perfectly with the way these shirts turned out. So we're just gonna be doing full color transfers today. So this first one, um, as a reminder, you want to make sure that you pre-press um, and in the instructions that come with these transfers, it doesn't remind you to pre-press, but it's always a good practice because you wanna make sure that you get all of the moisture out of your shirts anytime that you're trying to adhere anything to your shirts. So I usually just do it for about five to 10 seconds just to make sure I'm trying to get that moisture to evaporate. All right, so I know this yesterday I said I was gonna give this sweater to my son, but I changed my mind because I think that it's gonna be adorable with these skeletons on it. And I'm gonna give it to my neighbor because it just reminds me of her. The, the whole the sweatshirt skeletons, like all of it. Like I just feel like she would love this. So you see. Um, so whenever I'm putting on a transfer, I typically like to do it on my table, but I have been doing them over here. But what I like to do is get my ruler and just make sure that I'm ruling um, or measuring from like the armpit on both sides, just to see and make sure that I'm trying my best to be as center as possible. I'm gonna go from their hands, I think. Right there. Hey, I eyeballed that pretty darn good. I think that's pretty center. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and press. So the instructions on this is pressing it at 338 degrees for 15 seconds. And I always have, you guys that follow me can see, I always have my heat resistant film um, right here on top. I have it secured with magnets. Everything that you see me using in my tutorials, I always have in the description below. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, let's go ahead and press it. Again, this is for 15 seconds and then we're gonna open it back up. That didn't work, that was weird. Oh no, I did it backwards. <laughs> you guys, see, that was the biggest fail I think I have ever done. I literally just um, almost stuck it to my heat resistant sheet, but guess what? It came off, but I'm, what I'm worried about is the sticky part. <laughs> Literally, I was, I put it down this way thinking that the skeletons, you know, were white. No, no, the skeletons are black. So let's, let's try it again and let's see if it'll actually work. I, I may have totally just messed this up. Yeah, I may have messed this up. <laughs> you guys, I've never done that. I hope neither have you guys because that was a really silly mistake. And again, I don't know if this is gonna work. I may have just gotten all the sticky off of it by pressing it. <laughs> 
know, Emma, 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 you know, that's why I am here to show you what not to do so that you guys can do it right. Oh, my Manta. Let's see if I totally just biffed that. Okay, as of right now, it's still on the shirt and not on my heat resistant. So with this uh, full heat transfers, you have to wait for it to fully, fully um, cool down before you want to pill it. And this is going to be the moment of truth to see if I uh, totally biffed it up by <laughs> doing my first press on there. The nice thing about this stuff, and I know you guys see me touching it, it's because it's not, it kind of hangs. It's not like fully touching the platen. So it doesn't feel like it's sticky. Um, so I'm hoping that the sticky didn't actually sticky to it. I mean, it obviously did a little bit. <laughs> Emma. Oh gosh. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's see if I can, this is like the moment of truth. Is this really gonna work? Did I really ruin it? Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna be careful just because I do have a feeling that a lot of the sticky may have come off. All right, all right, all right. So far, so good, but we're not finished yet because we need to press again. Look how cute that's gonna be. Let's put it back on. <laughs> And then you press it again with your heat resistant sheet, um, or a lot of people will call it Teflon. It just depends on the brand that you're using. And then we're gonna press this time, I think it's for 10 seconds. Let me double check. Yep, so the first time was with the protective sheet that it comes on for 15 seconds, and then the second time is 10 seconds. And I've got my timer set for 15, so I just know that as soon as it hits five, then I'm gonna open it back up. Sweet. I think we salvaged it. That was really scary and I was really sad. But I think it worked. Let's look and see. Totally cute. I love how that turned out. So adorable. She's going to love it. A few more here. Here's the adorable, uh, which I think the cowhide one that I think turned out the best. Again, we want to pre press it. Before you pre press, make sure that you're lint rolling. This is, um, a lot of people think that this is just for sublimation. Lint rolling, it's not. You want to lint roll anytime you press your shirts. Um, and I know it didn't look like I lint rolled. Lint rolled on that last sweater. I actually did it before I turned the camera on. When you're doing your pre-press or when you're doing your actual presses, you want to try everything to, that you can to get the seams, like right here with the um, armpits, you know, right here, your seams on your neckline, try and get them off of the platen because it just kind of messes with your shirt a little bit. It is harder on the smalls because your sleeves are still gonna get pressed. You don't, there's nothing around that. But when you get to like your mediums and large and extra large, then the sleeves will totally hang off and you're good. Okay. Now let's see if I can do this one right, right? I mean, this one's pretty obvious because I want that up front. See what I did, just so you guys know, the back of these are gonna be white. And little Miss Muffet here was thinking that the skeletons were white, even though I knew they were black, it's just in the moment. <laughs> so that's why I laid it up. And that's why it started sticking to my flag. Oops. Okay, so let's make sure that we put this in, make sure it's centered. I always do about four, three to four finger lengths down. About right there. Making sure that it's equal. Every 15. All right, another 15 seconds. So cute. I love it. Oh my God. That is our cute. This is my new favorite shirt. Um, you guys know I say that after every time I press a shirt, but this one's my new favorite shirt. While it's cooling down, I'm just gonna press the bottom here to get these wrinkles out. While we're waiting for that one to cool, let's just move on to our next one. That one's now pressing for 15 seconds. This one's totally dry, or not dry, cool. So we're gonna peel it off. I never peel these off fast, you guys. Oh, I feel like, oh no, I'm supposed to do that. That scared me. Well, maybe. <laughs> this one almost, oh no, that's the look of it. I thought that something was wrong with this, but it's not. That is the actual look. It scared me, I thought I was leaving some of it behind. 
that's the look you're going for. Ah, uh, so cute. Let's move this one off. We're gonna put this one back on. Pressing this one again for another 10 seconds for the second round. Gosh, you guys, it turned out so stinking cute. I love it. Love it, love it. Look how cute. Adorable, right? See, I was a little, let me show you what I was nervous about. <laughs> See how it looks like faded right there? Well, it's supposed to be, that's the design. But as I was peeling it off, I thought that, I thought that I was doing something wrong, but that's the design, which I absolutely love. I think that this design goes amazing with this cowhide shirt. Literally my new favorite shirt. <laughs> yeah. So is this one, this is my other new favorite shirt. And this one will probably be my other new favorite shirt. this one again. Oh my gosh. Oh, that turned out so cute. I'm not going to let you see it yet. So cute. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is my new favorite Halloween shirt. Oh, oh, it's so cute. Look at it. Look at it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to wear that. Oh my gosh. I love the pinks in it. The, the whole thing that just turned out adorable. Okay, last shirt. Hi, our final one. So excited about this print. I think it's so cute. I forgot to mention these ones, like the one that I just pressed. Oh, and these ones, the ones that I'm wearing. I have had these. I can't remember if I bought them in like November, December last year, or if I bought them in early spring of this year, but I've had them for a while. I forgot about them. I was cleaning up my craft room and came across them. I was like, oh my gosh, totally forgot I had these. So I was a little nervous on if they would press or not because I had had them for so long and I, I wasn't sure if there's like, you know, maybe an expiration on, on their adhesive, but it has pressed perfect so far. Here we go on the last 10 seconds on the last shirt. This has been a long video. Thank you guys to everyone that stuck in with me. And I'm glad you guys did because, that's really greasy, or I need to grease that. Um, I'm glad you did because we were able to discover this really cool new technique of bleaching. So, so cute. Absolutely love it. Love the new trend totally on board oh so cute that was our last press I'm gonna turn it off i'll unplug it here in a second too cute i love how that turned out i think that's adorable i've seen this same print on different color shirts like on pink and purple i just liked it on this print because i felt like the different details in it you know were kind of the same colors of a raccoon so i just thought that would be kind of a fun one for this print what do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below. Which one of these, what did we do? I guess we did five. This one, ta -ta 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 -ta. this one, this one, right? This one. And then we can't forget about this adorable sweatshirt that I almost messed up. Thank goodness I didn't. But out of those ones, which one was your favorite? What is your favorite technique? Do you still like to do it this old fashioned way that I, I feel like I messed up on, but I really didn't. It just, this is a new way of bleaching. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. It's been so much fun to bring you some fun content. I've got lots more in store for this fall. So including like I was showing you before, the fun snow globe drink that we're going to be doing. I, I think I forgot to mention in the previous clip that you can actually sublimate on these and you can sublimate the lid. So you have your choice of sublimation or you could even put vinyl on it. So super excited to try those things with you. Those will be coming up soon. But again, as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me know that I'm in the right direction of the type of content that you guys are looking for. Don't forget to subscribe. But the most important thing, you guys, ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, 
We'll see you later, friends. Bye.